Someone was screaming inside the incinerator. The year was 1975. The location was a top-secret refinery and waste disposal plant, one of the many front organizations owned and operated by the SCP Foundation. This sprawling facility, separated into three different huge units, each with a specialized task, was located around 75 kilometers outside of Summer Springs, Colorado. It had operated for several decades without incident, but today all hell was about to break loose. Alarms were blaring in Unit C, the area of the facility that dealt with destroying non-anomalous waste via incineration. A traumatized worker had pulled the emergency lever near one of the incinerators in a panic when he'd first heard the loud banging against the interior walls and then those horrific pained wails. That's when workers of Unit C came to a horrifying realization. The screams weren't just coming from one of the incinerators in Unit C. They were coming from all six. A chorus of absolute agony echoing up out of the ash pits. This was impossible as far as the Unit C staff were concerned. These incinerators were only to be used for confirmed non-anomalous material. Could some animals or even some poor workers somehow fallen into the incinerators? But even if they had, what were the odds that someone had fallen in all six of them at once? It was impossible. The site director was immediately brought in to authorize an investigation, at which point he determined that at least one of the furnaces, in this case furnace number four, be shut off so researchers and guards could investigate what was going on inside. It seemed like the obvious course of action, but for some of the people on site that day, this would prove to be a fatal mistake. When the fires were put out, something started rattling in the disposal chute. There was a scratching and squealing noise, like something scraping up against the metal. A maintenance worker was ordered to go check inside, and when he opened the hatch, he let out a bone-chilling shriek. There was something, or was it someone, climbing back up the disposal chute. It emerged from the darkness, backlit by the still-burning embers of the incinerator, letting out an awful screeching noise that could make even a hardened mobile task force operative shake with fear. The creature was humanoid, a charred, mutilated skeleton reaching out towards the maintenance worker with a bony claw. Before the worker had a chance to stumble back in horror, the beast had clasped him by the throat and started to squeeze. It didn't even need to strangle him. The heat of its skeletal hand burned away the worker's throat in seconds, leaving his limp, wheezing body to drop to the metal grate of the platform below him. Several armed guards and maintenance workers moved forward to fend off the monster, but just then a volley of more violent shrieks echoed out of the chute behind it. It only took seconds for over a dozen more creatures to crawl out of the disposal chute. They were all like the first, people at various stages of incineration, some were glowing, charred skeletons with barely any flesh, others looking more like severe burn victims, their faces contoured into scowls of hate and rage. The assembled guards opened fire on the sudden influx of anomalies, emptying the magazines of their submachine guns into their burning bodies, but their weapons didn't seem to cause any lasting damage. The bullets would tear through the flesh of the creatures, causing some of them to stumble and fall, but the wounds would close and the creatures would rise again. It seemed they possessed a deadly combo of extremely high aggression and incredible regenerative abilities. None of the staff present in Unit C were safe as the burning corpses attacked anyone they could find with their bare hands, beating and biting and clawing. Many of them would grapple with Foundation personnel, latching onto them and trying to pull them back down into the incinerator with them. These creatures, that would later be known as SCP-2419-A, caused several fatalities with their surprise attack that day, and the situation was only brought back under control when a mobile task force that possessed more advanced training and weaponry was dispatched to the location. Despite orders from the site director, the MTF found it impossible to actually terminate any of the entities due to their regenerative abilities. Instead, the MTF agents focused on forcing the anomalies back into the chute of incinerator number four using a powerful industrial steam lance. Once they were back inside, the incinerator's burners were started up once again, 
The MTFs were also able to capture five of the entities and detain them for questioning and experimentation, finally bringing this unexpected containment breach to an end. The Foundation is an organization that prides itself on possessing forbidden and secret knowledge, but even they had no idea what had just happened. There seemed to be no earthly explanation why these creatures would suddenly manifest inside the incinerators. But as the detained anomalies continued regenerating, a slightly clearer picture of what exactly the Foundation was dealing with began to emerge. Every single one of the captured anomalies kept regenerating, and upon getting to the point that they were no longer burned scarred, the researchers studying the anomalous creatures discovered that each one was identical to a deceased D-Class from the Foundation's records. They were physically and genetically identical to the dead Class D personnel, perfect copies, save for the fact that their sole mission in life seemed to now be pure and unmitigated aggression and violence. Researchers wanted to gain greater insight into the minds of these strange creatures through the use of extensive psychological evaluations and interviews. It would turn out to be a very dangerous investigation. A psychological researcher by the name of Dr. Warren conducted an interview with one of the SCP-2419-A instances in hopes of better understanding their mindset. This creature had been heard laughing not long before the interview began, so it wasn't an unreasonable assumption to believe that it could be capable of speech. The interviewee was separated from Dr. Warren by a thick pane of glass to prevent it from indulging in any of its more violent urges. The problem was that Dr. Warren and his assistant researchers had severely underestimated what these creatures were capable of doing to get what they wanted. Dr. Warren tried to begin the interview in good faith. He spoke calmly and politely to the creature through the glass, attempting to remind it of the person it once was. The anomaly didn't appear to be paying attention to the doctor, though, instead focusing on pulling its own arm apart and breaking the bones within. Dr. Warren began to think that the creatures weren't even sentient. If the only activity they seemed to engage in was the wanton destruction of themselves and others. But underestimating them like this proved to be a big mistake. By removing the skin off of its arm and whittling its bone down to sharp edges, the anomaly had transformed its arm into a makeshift knife. Before anyone realized this, it had already used its own jagged bones to break the glass divider and attack Dr. Warren. He perished not long after, after being stabbed multiple times in his face and eyes, and the anomaly was forcefully taken back to its holding cell. Dr. Daniel Jennings, a senior researcher, was then put on the case. He released a chilling memo of the creatures after his observation period ended. It read, Before I came here, I worked as a prison shrink. Every person you met had a story bursting with pain and sorrow. Sometimes these stories were about the pain they suffered. Sometimes it was about the pain they inflicted. Some days you felt like everyone there was a beautiful soul torn down by their circumstances. Other days you'd find out what some of them did and a part of you was glad that they were there to suffer for it. But at the end of every day, I always told myself, they're all humans, they're all people. They all deserve the same dignity, respect, and love as everyone else. No exceptions. Dr. Jennings goes on. I opened up with that anecdote only so that you could understand that what I'm about to say is not said lightly. These things are not people. They are people-shaped monsters. They are well beyond any definition of psychopathy. Everything they do, they do to hurt, maim, and kill. I would pity them, but that would imply that they're worth pitying. Put them in a hole, then fill that hole with concrete. Better still, throw them back into the incinerator where you found them. I doubt they'll even care. Following this string of unfortunate incidents, containment procedures were put into place to hopefully prevent anything that had happened to the unlucky Foundation staff from happening again. The entire facility was fenced off and was constantly patrolled by MTF Beta-7, also known as the Maz Hatters. 
a group specializing in containing anomalies which present powerful biological, chemical, or radiological dangers. The furnaces that the anomalous creatures emerge from remain lit at all times, with workers checking and carrying out maintenance on every single one each day of the week. Outside of this, the facility is essentially a no-go zone. Reinforced steel hatches cover the chutes, and they are to forever remain bolted shut. All because of that one terrifying day in 1975. That was the day that the Summer Springs Waste Disposal Facility, which had been a valuable asset to the Foundation for decades, instead became classified as the Euclid-class anomaly SCP-2419. It is not uncommon for a Foundation asset to one day become a dangerous anomaly requiring containment, but the same question always pops up after. Why? What had a place that had been so valuable to the Foundation suddenly become such an active danger? The answer, as is often the case, is contained within the question. Why would a waste disposal plant be so important to the Foundation in the first place? And more importantly, what else was going on at the plant to make it such an area of active importance for one of the most powerful organizations in the entire world? To put it simply, the plant allowed the Foundation to dispose of something far more important than mere waste material. It gave them what they needed to better erase memories. As you probably already know, the Foundation makes liberal use of amnestics on those exposed to anomalous material to make them forget what they had seen and experienced. But these elusive chemicals, many of which are sourced from SCP-3000, are an inexact science. However, at the Summer Springs Waste Disposal Plant, researchers discovered an immensely valuable alternative. Much of what was disposed of in the incinerators of Unit C were the bodies of dead D-Class personnel. Before being burned, autopsies were performed on the bodies to make sure they were non-anomalous, including the brain. Back in the 1960s, while performing research on the brains of dead D-Classes, they found a method of extracting and distilling the positive memories of the dead, creating a kind of happy soup. When administered into someone who has undergone amnestic treatment, this happy soup creates positive false memories in their mind that fills in those pesky blank spaces that are often behind. This was so useful that happy memories were extracted from the minds of every single D-Class corpse that passed through Unit C, totaling well into the thousands by the time that the first SCP-2419-A instances began to rise. But as all happiness, joy, and love were removed from the minds of the D-Classes, it seemed that all that was left was pure hate, pain, violence, and fury. Feelings too intense and evil to destroy. These were bodies imbued with a malice so powerful that no fire could ever burn them away. They exist now with single-minded determination to get out and destroy everything around them. Everything. Including the ones that made them the SCP Foundation itself. And in the end, it's only a matter of time until they get out. There are thousands of them in there, unable to die, unable to stop. The only thing keeping them in there is the constant burning of the furnaces around them, and those furnaces can't burn forever. The monsters lurking in SCP-2419 will outlive the fire that surrounds them. Because while the furnaces they are contained in are hot, the fires of hate that burn within SCP-2419 entities are even more powerful. And they know this. They know they can't be contained forever, and that someday soon, they'll be able to emerge and exact their terrible revenge. Those who must walk past the incinerators may think they hear their screams echoing out from within, but it's not screaming at all. It's laughter. Now check out SCP-1861, the crew of the HMS Wintersheimer, and SCP-3999, I am at the center of everything that happens to me, for more tales of terror from the SCP Foundation.